Good night, Fight Fans, or I should say good morning, Fight Fans. It's 3.30 in the morning here in Brazil. UFC 212 is in the books. Uh, Max Holloway is the new UFC featherweight champion, undisputed UFC featherweight champion. Just defeated Jose Aldo here in front of his uh, Brazilian uh, fans in Rio de Janeiro. I'm joined by Adriano Albuquerque from Combate.com, one of the biggest sites in the world, sites in the world, uh, the biggest one in Brazil. Uh, he's here to, to, to talk to me, with me, about the, the fights that just happened here at the Ginesh Arena in Rio de Janeiro. First of all, Diano, uh, were you surprised with the outcome of the main event, uh, Max Holloway being able to, to outpoint uh, and outstrike uh, Jose Aldo and win by TKO in the third round? Well, a little bit, you know, uh, I definitely thought Max was able to, to win the fight, but I thought that Jose's experience, you know, uh, being so long with the with the belt and uh, his technical acumen, you know, would be better. He he would win the fight on based on those points. But uh, uh, Max surprised us again. You know, he's been doing that. He's got a big range. He's got great striking, and uh, he capitalized on all those mistakes. Leading up to the fight, the the, the talk was with Jose Aldo would use more of his wrestling and jiu-jitsu and use more of his le uh, leg kicks as well. And he didn't try a single takedown and pretty much didn't land a kick, didn't throw a kick in the fight. Uh, that surprised me a lot. Were you expecting that, that, that kind of a, a strategy from him as well? Uh, to use the leg kicks? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a little bit. Uh, I was talking to some guys here in the media room during the fight and uh, uh, Actually, we thought that maybe uh, Max was waiting for him to throw the kick to, to strike, to counter strike. So maybe that's what Aldo saw and that's why he didn't throw the leg kicks. But at the same time, uh, that Depe Derneiras, his coach, uh, mentioned, I think in, in Brazilian TV, that uh, the, the game plan was for him to mix up some, some takedown attempts and uh, he really didn't try to take him down. Max speculated that, you know, maybe it's because he's looking to box right now, he wanted to prove something. Maybe so. But uh, yeah, he definitely disappointed in there. We definitely expected him to try to, to take it to the fence and try to take him to the ground a little bit. You work for the, the, the biggest website here in Brazil, uh, so you know how big of a star Jose Aldo is. How much uh, does his star power uh, is hurt now especially after the corner loss, he won at, two, at UFC 200, but now again, losing his belt for, for, for good now here, especially here in Brazil. Yeah, I think it takes a big hit, no doubt about it. I mean, uh, he really got a lot more popular since his movie came out, you know, the movie about his life. But at the same time, there are Brazilian fans these days that are, you know, uh, mentioning the Conor McGregor f fight, you know, all the time. You, the same comments that you get in Twitter about, you know, 13 seconds, Conor though, it's the same that you get here. Yeah. So uh, after that, you know, those guys are going to come in a lot harder. So, but, but I don't know, you know, uh, maybe he stays popular. He, he resonates with the people because of his simplicity. You know, uh, I, I, I think, you know, even bigger than, than Anderson. Not, he's not as popular as Anderson Silva or as Victor Belfort, but he resonates with them more because of his simplicity. So maybe, you know, it doesn't fall that much. So I think that the period of his move now is to, fight, is to make uh, Max Holloway against Frankie Edgar. Do you think this is really the start of the blast era? Well, you know, that kid is young. That kid uh, is motivated. Uh, he's, he's not even at the peak of his technique, you know, at the peak of his... I, I, that's what I was saying, you know, I think Jose Aldo would win based on experience. I was talking, when I talked to Max before that fight, I felt like he was some of, the, like some of those guys that are like, uh, I'm getting the title now, the title shot now, but if I don't get the mm -hmm. win, I still have a lot of time, you know. Is there a chance for him to, to get experience? Yeah, like I'm still growing up in my technique and uh, he surprised us. So yeah, maybe this is the beginning of his era, uh, but like, like you said, Frankie Edgar is the obvious matchup. It's a, a bad matchup for him. It's a bad matchup for pretty much everyone, not named Aldo, you know, on that division. So, you know, 
I, I still would like to see that before I can claim yes, yeah. it is the blessed era. I would like to see him beat uh, Frankie Edgar. Right now, to me, again, just like Aldo, it's a pick -em between both of them. Yeah, in the coming event, uh, Jose Aldo's former teammate, Claudio Gatcarelli, showed a lot of improvement uh, since her last fights. She got her first finish in the UFC against a tough fighter in Carolina who went five rounds against the champion. Yeah. Uh, it was surprising for me. I, 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 I picked her to win, but being a submission in the first round, it wasn't a surprise for Casey, our cameraman, who picked uh, Claudia in a first round submission, but uh, it was for me. And for you, did you, did you expect Claudia to win? And were you were surprised with how she was able to dominate Carolina? I expected her to win. Uh, I had picked the submission win in the second round. <laughs> I thought it would last a little longer. So, you know, what I was surprised was with how easy Carolina was taken down and dominated, you know. That goes to show that uh, Claudia was right moving to the United States and changing her training. She's been uh, saying a lot about uh, how he, she, she changed her focus in her training to, you know, properly build her body up to the fight and that show tonight, you know, she really showed like fresh and uh, easily took her down and dominated the fight. So, yeah, she, she's looking good. Before the fight, Claudia was saying that she doesn't want a, a, a title shot, he, he, that she wouldn't ask for, for a title shot. She won the first round and she didn't ask for a title shot. She says that she's going to train and prepare for, for Joanna, but she doesn't want to, this, this, this fight right now. She just keep fighting and winning. What do you do with, with, with her right now? She's clearly the, the, the number one in the division, but it seems like Rose is going to get the, the, the next title shot. Do you see anyone else that makes sense for her to fight right now? I, I, I can't really see anyone. Well, uh, I think someone in the press conference said a good name, you know, Jessica Andrade, I guess. She's, she also just fought for the title, went five rounds. She's a tough cookie, you know, she won't uh, be easily taken down. She, she won't be knocked out. I mean, yeah. Joanna tried that for five rounds, hit her a lot, and she, it still didn't knock her out. So uh, also a tough jiu-jitsu fighter. So I, I think that fight would be good. But also, you know, if, if she beats Jessica, then, then it becomes inevitable. You have to give her Joanna because who else are you going to be throwing to her? Maybe Michelle Watterson? Who's also coming off a loss, so it doesn't make sense uh, yeah. for, for Claudia. So she's in a tricky situation right now. In, yeah. the, in the strawweight division. And moving on to the fight, to the third top fight of the card, Vitor Belfort finally getting a win for him against Nate Marquardt. He, he's a drop of uh, quality of the opponents. He was fighting top contenders in a row, a lot of tough names, uh, losing fights in a, by, by knock and, and all that. And now he's, he, he went three rounds for the first time in 10 years. He won a decision for the first time in 10 years. He went more there then two rounds actually since 2012 against John Jones. Were you, were you actually surprised that this fight went the distance and Claudia uh, and against <laughs> Carolina uh, ending in the first round? Well, uh, I was surprised it went the distance. <laughs> Nobody not, expected that. <laughs> yeah, not, not about the Claudia. Like I said, I expected a submission from her, but, you know, nobody expected this decision, to, this fight to go to a decision between Vitor and, and Nate. But uh, uh, maybe it's a sign of age yeah. coming for both of them, actually, you know, uh, and it's a sign of a new Vitor. I, I mean, uh, he really seemed like a, a lot more patient with his shots and, and with his offense, you know, that's something that he was alluding to back in Fortaleza, back in his last fight against Gastelum, that he wanted to reinvent himself. Now he really sh looked like a new Vitor, like he really reinvented himself, looked like a tri-star fighter, yeah. right? Uh, you know, like George St. Pierre, yeah. you know, trying to take it to the point. Yeah, strategical. Though I do think there was a hometown discount for him. I yeah. don't think he, he won you the fight. I, I scored it for Nate, uh, first two rounds to Nate, last round to Vitor. How did you have it scored? I scored, scored the, the first round for Nate, but it's the second and third for Vitor. So I have him winning 29, 28, but it was close. Well, why, why did you have the second round to Vitor? I think Vitor landed the, the, the best shots. It was a round that nothing... Uh, Significant happened yes. for both sides, but Vitor was able to land the best shot. I, I mean, I, I, 
if 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 I rewatch it, maybe I I yeah. I would come up with a, with a different scorecard. Because I was watching it live and in close, so with all the noises and all that, it's hard to to, yeah. to pay attention in the actual fight. But I think Vito won, but it was close and it's a pick and it's a yes yes yeah. And uh, but you were you were talking about being Vito being more uh, of a much much mat mature fighter now being more strategical. Is it a new Vitor or is this Vitor fighting uh, someone not as tough as Musasi and Jacare? Because Vitor was, was patient against those fighters as well. So he, he, he didn't attack as much, but Nate also didn't, didn't attack him as much. So is this a new Vitor or is it a sign that Vitor should stop fighting top contenders and fighting someone close to his age or close to his uh, skill level now? Uh, that's a good point, very good point. I think he really has to be fighting someone closer to his age. But then uh, Jacare is also kind of older and uh, Musasi as well. Both of them are kind of uh, around his same age group, right? Yeah. He, age generation. So yeah, uh, maybe the, the answer is he needs to be fighting uh, competition closer to his age or competition. And closer to his uh, to MMA his age as well. Yes, yeah, to his MMA he's age. He's an old fighter fighting for more than two decades. So his competitive uh, age is not uh, equal to, yes. to his opponents. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, uh, when, when Nate Marquardt was announced, we all thought, now that's a good yeah. matchup for him, you know? So, yeah, prob but I don't know who else, you yeah. know, it's left for, for him to fight to. I would like to, to see him walk into this podium and say, yeah. I'm done, you know, I'm, I'm done, I'm happy, I just got to fight, I win, you know, after all this time, I'm done, I'm going to retire, I'm going to work in the background, you know, but unfortunately, he wants to keep fighting. Well, not unfortunately, because, you know, I, I am a Victor yeah. fan and he's got a lot of fans. Uh, I'm sure they're happy to see him keep fighting. I just hope, you know, he ends his career, you know, safely, doesn't have any more serious injuries, even if he loses. That's our, what our thoughts and prayers. Yeah, yeah and, and, and he keeps asking for this League of Legends, this idea, yeah. and mentioning uh, Chuck Liddell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that the, the right fight for him? I mean, Chuck hasn't fought in years. Uh, that would be a good fight for Vitor, but I don't yes. think Chuck <laughs> should come back at all to, 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 to fight, especially someone like Vitor. No, no, no. No, no Chuck Liddell, <laughs> no League of Legends, man. I, I mean, in the age of CTE, you're talking yeah. about a League of Legends bringing back guys that took a lot of hits to their, to their head, you know? Uh, he says he's got a set of rules, you know, this whole set of rules, different rules to prevent that. I would like to see that first before I yeah. sign up for that. That tester. Yes. Yeah. And moving all the way down to, to, the, to the prelims, one of the big fighters of, of, of the card, Marlon Moraes, UFC debut against Rafael Sonson. It wasn't the, the greatest fight, but it was a, a kind of the fight that, that, that we expected it to be. Yes. Were you, first of all, how do you use card fight? Well, to be honest with you, during that fight, I was, you know, doing work here, you know, so I didn't quite watch it, but I did see that Asunção had some big moments, you know, yeah. I saw him rock Marlon Moraes at the end of the first, and uh, in the third round, I thought he was doing okay too, but I asked the round, and most people had Marlon uh, winning the fight, so, you know, but, but that's what it is. That's the typical Asunção fight, you yeah. know? He's tough. He's a tough guy. He takes your best shots. He gives you some good shots. And uh, you're never sure who won it, yeah. you know? Like, think back to his win against TJ Dillashaw. It was kind of the same thing. And he know? just last fight against Sterling. It was yes. also a split decision, controversial one. Sterling think he won. Exactly. He's a guy that's tough to finish. Nobody finishes that guy. And he's not also a, a big finisher. Yeah. So, you know, you're always left wondering. But what you have to give to him is he's tough and he fought, you know, toe-to-toe -to -toe with a top guy, a guy that we all thought was going to come in right into the UFC and maybe challenge right away for a title. So, you know, uh, it was a big test for Marlon. I, I don't think that this loss hurts Marlon that much because Asunção is a, is a great fighter and it's a tough matchup for pretty much everyone in the division. Yeah. So, but I think it was a bad call by, by the UFC to, to book this fight because you have this 
exciting fighter coming to the UFC, a champion in another, another division, and you book him against a fighter that is not an exciting fighter, win or lose, he doesn't put on great fights. So I, th I think they, they, they should have handled the Marlon Moraes better if they're trying to, to, to build him as a future contender. Uh, so what do you, you do next? Asunção is asking for, for a title shot. It's complicated because Cody is injured. TJ yeah. is willing to move down to fight uh, Demetrius Johnson. And Dominic Cruz is out there waiting as well to get his title shot, his, yes. his rematch against Cody. And there you have Asunção, who, who has won eight out of nine fights as bantamweight. So this, it's a mess in this division as well, similar to other divisions in the UFC today. Yes. I mean, uh, it all depends, I think, on TJ and Cody. You know, how long is Cody out? If Cody is going to be out for a long time, then you have to give this guy some fight. You have to do something. And uh, TJ, if TJ moves down to flyweight, you know, if he does fight uh, for the title against Demetrius, then then it's a possibility, you know, you either give a rematch to Dominic or you give the title shot for Asunção. I think for all the work that Asunção has put, put together, all the stuff that he's done, you know, he was close to a title shot before he got injured for two years, you know, so I think he deserves the, the shot, but I doubt no, the you UFC would, today, yeah, yeah, I doubt, I highly, <laughs> highly doubt that would happen. Uh, so, you know, with with Cody being out for so long and TJ coming down, I would think, you know, Dominic versus Asunção would be the, 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 the right fight. You know, it gets Dominic a, another fight instead of giving him the instant rematch. It gets you, it gives Asunção a, another fight to prove that he's the, the number one contender. It gives the UFC maybe, you know, the chance to knock out Asunção of the picture mm -hmm. again since it seems like they don't really want Asunção to be fighting for the title. And uh, I think we would be, it would be a great matchup. And just the last question, uh, among the other fights in the UFC, we had a lot of great finishes tonight. What stand out the most as the most impressive one for you? Well, that's tough to say, man. I mean, uh, I think Brian Kelleher submitting yeah. uh, Yuri Marajó was very impressive. The guy took the fight in, what, uh, less than a month's notice? Yeah, three weeks, something like that. Three weeks, something like that, in, you know, coming in against uh, uh, the number 13 in the rankings and then coming up and, and you know, rising, riling up the Brazilian crowd, and yeah. tra giving their chance back, giving the, the signal to them. That's, that takes some guts, man. So, you know, that that was impressive and uh, obviously uh, Paulo Borrachinha uh, knocking out uh, Oluwale Bangbos was, was huge, you know. Uh, I mean, there was a fight that was, you know, tailor-made for him to win and uh, now he needs to face some tougher opposition, but, you know, two knockouts in your first two UFC fights, that's impressive. So you think he's a future star in the UFC? Well, like I said, I would like to see him fight someone better, someone tougher, you know, before claiming that he's a future star of the UFC, you know. I, uh, that competition so far hasn't been, you know, the scariest. It has been two tailor-made opponents for him, so uh, I don't know. But he's definitely got, you know, the looks, he's got uh, the power. For that, he's got, you know, he talks well as well. So, and the uh, Brazilian market really needs another star. So, uh, he's got the potential, but I would like to see him against tougher competition before stating that. Hey, it would be like, uh, it's on the UFC to, to, to book the right matchups and give him time to, to evolve instead of uh, treating him like Eric Silva or Charles Oliveira like they did in the past, drawing them. Right, right, right away to the Sharks. Yes, this, this, these two fights were showcase fights for yeah. him. That was, that's pretty obvious. Let's see if they keep throwing him softballs, throwing him on showcase fights, or they start feeding him the, char, the Sharks. Yeah, that's right. So that's it for us, for, for us here in Rio de Janeiro. Thank you for following us all week, our coverage on MMAfighting.com. I'm Guilherme Cruz. This is Adriano Albuquerque, Adriano Caldas, Adriano several names <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for watching and see you next time in Rio in Brazil in October.